Hello and welcome to Stronger 99.94 Cricket Every Day. My name is Mark Machado from the Merrily and I'm joined as always by Estelle Vaza Devon from the Papre, who is joining us live and direct from Australia. She prepares for the T20 World Cup. We'll get onto that in a few moments. Sri Lanka is or not. Sri Lanka and 99.94 is your home of Sri Lanka content and we'll be dropping into your podcast feed on YouTube or the 99.94 app several times every week. So please rate, review and subscribe. If you've done all that already, thank you very much and please continue to tell your friends and family. Thanks for joining Cricket's Conversation. Today, Estelle... It, we've almost had to scramble this podcast together. And, you know, that is totally my fault because you called it. Sri Lanka women are through to the Asia Cup final. They got to the semi final. And as you said, anything can happen. And anything did happen because they were able to defend 13 off the last two overs. Unbelievable scenes in Bangladesh. Um, when it was happening, you, you, you. As I mentioned earlier, you're in Australia, so I, I don't believe you can you can actually watch it live. I can't watch it live, legally at least, um, because it's not on on screens in the UK. Uh, but when it was all happening, we were going nuts on 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 our WhatsApps and also on social media. Right? What was your emotions seeing it all happen? Yeah, it was incredible. I was following everything on Crick Info on the live scores and just checking Twitter on and off because. As as you said, I was I'm in Australia, so the time difference is kind of I'm still kind of getting used to it. And like those last two overs, just incredible, refreshing, refreshing, refreshing. That quick info live score bug, just just trying to see what was happening. And one of three Pakistan still had a chance, especially with Nidadar um, batting. But that was incredible because nobody gave. I mean, there's no reason to have given Sri Lanka a chance in this tournament, you know, because they they haven't done much in the recent past, in the recent few years, but just incredible. And I'm so happy for the girls because they put, a, put in a lot of hard work, obviously, right? And we don't really see they're performing too well against the top team. So just to get that in, just to get that belief in, incredible. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Estelle, to you, I think we, me and you first started talking a couple of years ago. And when we first started talking, cricket had just restarted after COVID, after the pandemic. And the big question that was actually, that everyone was asking was, where had the women's team gone, right? And, you know, you came on the Murali end to explain that, um, all, you know, essentially SLC hadn't organized anything for them. I think you spoke to Jared Kimber and said SLC hadn't organized anything for them. You went on the uh, Stranker Cricket podcast and just said SLC hadn't organized anything for them. Uh, I think you were just basically, everyone in the cricket world wanted to know where the Stranker women's team were. I mean, in the last 24 hours, they, they've they've shown us all where they, where they are and also what they're capable of. And if you put a little bit into into the system for them, they they will reap the rewards and I'm absolutely ecstatic by it. Of having to rearrange my my weekend, I'm frantically calling every single shrunken restaurant in London to see if they're going to be showing the game live. Um, I'm I'm I just I'm quite emotional about it, Estelle. Right, because it's been you know we try and not talk about politics of Sri Lanka too much, but it's been a, it's been a difficult time for Sri Lankans in the last few years. I mean, like I say that a lot of the last 70 years have been difficult times for people on that island. Um, but just the resilience that these girls have shown because they, they're they not supported in any in anywhere near the way the, the, the boys are supported. They don't have the infrastructure and the structure under no, uh, un, below them anywhere near what the, what the men have. It's, I just, and, you know, going into the tournament, me and you really did, think we had no idea how this was going to work i think it was entirely possible that they could have missed that totally on getting to the semi-finals they could have done they could have had a tournament like bangladesh had done and i don't think me or you would have been overly surprised they've turned up they've lost the first match against india but they've every single game they've kind of improved along the way right yeah absolutely and i think it's a lot to do with that experience in the bowling attack we spoke about the spinners how they have really grown in the last couple of years, particularly the likes of Inoka Ranavira, uh, Achinikula, sorry, uh, um, 
Oshadi Rana Singh right they've they've they have some of the most experienced players in the team and they've really you know they've gone from strength to strength in those last couple of years i think maybe it's some credit is due to denu khetiarachi the spin bowling coach with the team uh, right now seems to have done a really good job because you can see an improvement and that's what i mean at the end of the day that's all you can ask from the team right even with the batting which has not been great we have to admit it's just that the the bowlers particularly the spinners have just over the last couple of years just kept improving and you spoke about the lack of games and this year sri lanka have had games so maybe that is the reason that we're seeing such a good performance sri lanka played the commonwealth games they played india they played pakistan so they and they of course played the qualifiers for the commonwealth games so they've got plenty of matches under their belt so far they did look a bit rusty um in the first game against india but of course as we spoke about it then it, i mean you almost expect that kind of performance against india because the team skill wise are so far apart but what i love is that over the last few games they found some way to win they haven't been perfect with the bat ball or in the field but they've found some way to win and it hasn't been one person doing all the work they found a way to get through and the few people contributing so that's what's i think brilliant to see yeah it, it's that same spirit that we see you know that that we've come to uh, associate with the men's team um i was speaking to to our boss and the head of the kimberverse jared kimber the other day and we were talking about um sri lanka's the men's team what they might achieve at the world cup and i said that the thing that you can never the reason why i think you can never count out sri lanka is because of this just this spirit that that they have and i think actually broadly speaking i think the people have because people you know when you when regular cricket journalists from other parts of the world come to write a review or you know preview what a sri lanka team might do they try and look at it through the prism of of the regular world and what they don't realize is that every day the adversities that many people uh, have to face in the island are so extreme that the idea of just going out onto on, onto a pitch with a few of your mates and and winning a cricket match um seems so much easier than you know than than living life or you know having to to deal with some of the stuff that's happened on the island in the last few years that actually the the resilience of the people and and the that's that kind of fighting spirit that wildcat spirit within them comes out and and they're able to 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 try to find a way or if they don't it's always a spectacular failure but at, you know we'll we'll sit there and watch the ride and enjoy every moment of it right um let, let's take a quick break there uh when we come back let's go into let's let's look at let's talk about uh the play of the match award and dancing you're listening to cricket's conversation on 99.94 Whatever your team, we have the show for you on podcast, YouTube, or on the 99.94 app. We have India, England, South Africa, West Indies, and now Sri Lanka covered. If you want to find us, the best way is to follow us on social media at 9994dm by downloading the 9994 app or Google 99.94 on podcast. We speak cricket. Uh, so Estelle, uh, let, let's get into the to the to the game a little bit more. We talked about the 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 inconsistency in the batting has been a bit of a theme all the way through. We've talked about how or g- going into the tournament, all our chat was if it, uh, if Sri Lanka are going to do something in this tournament, Charmery has got to to score big runs with the bat. Thus far, she hasn't done that. Well, I, obviously, I, you know, I'm going to have to say it because that's the nature of these things. We're all expecting one one good innings in her, and you know the, the rest of the team have kind of teed her up for this. I should also add she is the captain, so she is making you know she does bring a lot more than than just runs as well, and you know she's a large part of the success. But it's really the bowling, isn't it? We've mentioned it before. The the their spinners, they're pretty. You know you you don't want to be having to chase any t- sort of score against them, right? And they're getting better and better and better. Yeah, I think the toss has played a massive role in this because I think the overall feeling in the 
kind of a setup is also that the bowling is the stronger suit and I mean understandably so right so they want to have a bat first get as much on the board as possible I recall seeing someone tweeting about uh, it yesterday as well like against a team like Pakistan try to get 120 115 and you, you're still in with a chance when you've got bowlers like Sri Lanka do so I think that's where Atapattu is going to be really important in the final. I don't think 120 is going to be enough against India, uh, to be completely honest. I mean, of course, anything can happen. But um, if Sri Lanka are going to, if, if they want to feel safe, they'll want at least 140 if they get to bat first. But I mean, just on Chamari Atapattu, it's funny because I think the conditions have really played a massive role in how well Sri Lanka have done so far. We spoke about it offline as well for, for those spinners. Sri Lanka do rely very, very heavily on their spinners. They've got only one quick bowler in the side. The rest all turn their arm over. They've got the part-time spinners. They've got off spinners, leg spinners, every kind of, kind of spin bowler. The funny thing is the conditions have been so... Uh, good for them but at the same time I don't think Atapattu enjoys those kind of conditions particularly she does like the bat the ball coming on to the bat she uh, has seen a lot of success in countries like uh, Australia where you know the ball's coming to you you don't have to make the pace um, so that's kind of ironic I guess because we all expected like you said if Sri Lanka to, to do well it's going to have to be Atapattu but conditions have not been to her liking. But fortunately, people, other people have, uh, you know, really stood up. Harshita Samaravikrama, I think, has, we spoke about her, I think, in one of our earlier episodes as well. Such a promising player, still so young. Um, and she, I think this is, this is the tournament for her, right? She's done, she's got runs in nearly every game. And she's got really important runs. Uh, didn't get run a ball I mean, uh, run a ball in the in in the in the semi final against Pakistan, but those thirty five runs were really uh, valuable, particularly after losing that early wicket. And she was, I mean, pushed down to number three after so much success opening so far in the tournament. So those are the good signs you want to see. You like, I think again we spoke about this earlier. You want to see this team win without Atapattu's contributions, and that's what we've seen in this tournament fa so far. She has not had any luck with the bat. Um, she has, I, I won't say she hasn't contributed because obviously she's captain and she's maneuvering things in the field and so on. But in her primary kind of role, she has not done much. But still, Sri Lanka have managed to do well. I think particularly, I think, one call I can think of where, I mean, now it turns out to be a genius move, but bowling Achini Surya in that final over against Pakistan in the semi, I wouldn't have done it, if I'm being honest. You have one quick in your side and all your spinners have been the ones dragging things back and you give the ball to the quick bowler. But how good was she under pressure? I can guarantee you she hasn't bowled in that kind of situation before with that much pressure on her, with so many expectations. This defending nine runs is good in any, any form of cricket, right, in the last over. So Atapattu has contributed, not just not in the way that we really expected her or wanted her to. Yeah, I, I think you you know a part of the hallmark of, of her captaincy in this tournament is totally to back her, back the rest of the players, the team, right? Give them the confidence to go out and do amazing things. It's interesting how on these slow turning pitches in Bangladesh, the par score seems to be you know as you say about anything over one twenty seems to be quite good. Obviously, the one team that that might not translate to might might be India, but. You know, we can't really preview the final because I suspect by the time pe most people listen to this, the final will actually be played or about, you know, be be hours from, from being played, maybe even just being played. What we can say is that India do seem to have a knack of getting to finals and losing them, right? So, uh, and, you know, on top of all that is all the pressure is on this India side. No one is expecting anything from these Sri Lankan girls. And, and the Indians have all the superstars, um and you, again it's i just think it's it, it it could be the perfect storm for for sri lanka to to get this win uh can we talk about the player of the match award right because it was given 
to uh, uh, Ranavira, but she didn't want it, right? She she wanted to give it away. She didn't think she was the person who won it, which I thought was amazing. Yeah, she wanted to share it with Achi Nikula Surya because, like I said, right? I'm I'm t- anyone who's followed the Sri Lankan women's team in the last couple of years would have been shaking their heads when Achi Nikula Surya was given the ball for that last over, because. One thing is, like I said, we haven't had that kind of experience where you're bowling in such a pressure situation, right? It's nine to defend off the last over, a final on the line. You would want to give it to somebody else. Uh, A spinner would have been the best choice to many people. But I think, like you said, Atapattu has just backed her players and given them that kind of confidence that they need to do well and... Like, you could see how much it meant to Kulasuri as well, right? If you've seen the video of the presentation, she was overwhelmed as well because it's about giving that kind of credit. What Ranavira was doing, was it was just like she went for 22 or 4 overs, didn't pick up a wicket. So nobody watching those highlights are going to talk about Kulasuri, right? But I think that's what's great to see about this team is that they're playing as one now, and that's why we're seeing that kind of success for Sri Lanka, that, you know, playing for each other, trying to give credit, trying to support each other. So that's really fantastic. So whoever, like the management or Atapattu or the senior players, Ranavira has captain Sri Lanka as well. So obviously she's a respected part of the team. Whoever has kind of done that, who's managed to get that going, I think that's kind of the first step that, Sri Lanka can take towards more success in the future. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, let's talk about dancing. If you love the language of cricket and want more, then head over to the 99.94 app and you can hear all of our podcasts and cricket commentary. We're adding new shows all the time and covering cricket series from all over the world. Be the first to hear all of our announcements by following us on social media at 9994DM. Welcome to Cricket's Conversation. So Estelle, yesterday I got two videos on WhatsApp about um, about th- this semi-final. The first one was uh, the complete final over, which obviously I'd watched after I knew the result. That last ball when it goes up into the air and when I, I can't remember who the fielder is underneath it doesn't take the catch. You just think, Oh no, even though I knew what the result was going to be, I was thinking, Oh no, that's it. Well, that's it. I was like, I, I don't know how they've managed to do it, but they've managed to redo the result. Um, and then it, she, she picks it up. It's actually brilliant field. she picks it up and she throws it back to the wicketkeeper who also misfeels it, but still manages to get the run out. It's a brilliant piece of 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 cricket um, that highlights a the skill in in the women's side and how much they know. Uh, sorry, like how, how well they know the game of cricket and how which sorry that might sound kind of condescending, but they know they they know what to do. But also, I always think when you see bad fielding, the bad fielding you see from the shrunken women's side is because they are not full time cricketers. It's because they do not have enough time to focus on cricket. It's not because they're bad fielders. It's because they're not given the 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 space to to become uh, great, great fielders, right? And I think that moment, that last ball, sums up everything about women's cricket in Sri Lanka right now. The spirit and the determination is there. The the um the the skill to get there is there. The talent and the and the, the, they know how to do it. The problem is, is that they could do it a lot easier if they were just given a lot more, if they were given a little bit more resources and hopefully, you know, the success that they've seen might might persuade. Look, I, I really want a women's Lunker Premier League. How amazing would that be? Um, you know, it doesn't have to start off with as many teams as, as the men do. They maybe just only need three teams or four teams. Um, and I'm, I'm sure I'm sure it would be a raging success if SLC, you know, one of the, lo- one of the most richest and and well-run uh cricket balls in the world that's their words not mine um uh, is able to get it off the ground i'm sure if within a few years it would be a roaring success um but we i also want to talk to you estelle about the other video 
I got, which is the dance afterwards, which for me is an emotional roller coaster and is absolutely brilliant. Do you know what the song is? Yeah, unfortunately, I don't know what the song is. I'm not 100% sure it's even a Sri Lankan song. I mean, I got the video as well. It's just trying to figure out what it is. I mean, it, does it really matter? That was incredible, right? And you have to feel happy for them. I, I don't think there's anybody who saw that game who 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 grudges who who kind of doesn't want that from them because it's so good to see a team like that doing well, just enjoying themselves. They've had some really really tough times, and you know you know cricket fans, right? You don't do well, and there are all these things on the internet asking why are they spending money on them? What's going on? You know, questioning everything. So just, I'm sure that that would that really gets to them as well. So to see them win a game like that, and not only this game, I think even against Bangladesh, it's because they held their nerve with the ball that they were able to pull things off. The team that panicked lost in both games. Um, Bangladesh needed 14 of 12, eight wickets in hand, chasing only 14, seven overs. There was, I mean, there's no way Sri Lanka is winning that game, right? Uh, similarly, Pakistan, how much? 13 of the last two? So yeah. just to see them pull off wins like that, they deserve all the, I mean, the merriment. I don't know what's going to happen in the final. And I don't think anybody's expecting Sri Lanka to topple India. But just the fact that they've managed to come to the final, they've beaten everyone except India in this uh, tournament. Well, they did lose the dead rub against Pakistan. But just to see how well they've done. It's just they deserve all that kind of celebration, right? Yeah, ab absolutely, absolutely. I mean, no one's expecting them to beat India, but no one would be surprised if they did, right? That's where this team has, has taken themselves to. It, it's incredible. Um, let's leave it there. Obviously, we'll be back. As I as I mentioned, Estelle is in Australia, so you know we're we're gearing up and very excited about the T Twenty World Cup. That starts on, well, for, I don't know when you'll listen to this, but for us, it starts in two days' time. Well, for me, two days. I think Estelle a day, possibly, is it? Time difference is not my friend as Estelle and <laughs> Meda and all the other people involved in in uh, producing this podcast will tell you. that we. I think they're, they're just basically at a point where they're having to kind of just tell me what, what time we're going to do things and... And that's it. It's a bit of a disaster. Thank you for listening to Sri Lanka at 99.94, where we speak cricket every day. Please do rate, review, subscribe, wherever you enjoy your podcast. Tell all your friends about us. Um, and remember, you can download the 99.4 app and follow us on Twitter. Um, the 99 point... Sorry, I'm going to do that again. Sorry, Meta, I messed that one right up. Thanks for listening to Sri Lanka 99.94, where we speak cricket every day. Please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you enjoy your podcast. And do tell your friends and family about us. You can download the 99.94 app and follow us on Twitter. I'm at Mark Machado, and Estelle is at Estelle underscore Vazu Dev one, as in the number one. Uh, never miss out. Join our 24-7 conversation on social media and follow us at 99.94 DM. Cricket every day your way.